we talked a lot of, last time about how we have to present to the client right now. Where our the the biggest like kink in the hose, if you will, is being able to convert buyers into getting under contract. And there's a lot that we can own on that. But then even from a real estate agent perspective, how they structure an offer and making sure that we write a winning offer, there's a lot that we could teach them on that. But all of us, agent and us, want to help as many buyers as we can, but pulling credit and doing these consults doesn't really create cash in our bank account if we're not converting. And so now that we've gone a deep dive, I feel like we've done a deep dive into what that presentation looks like. That's really the same thing that we're using to in that first meeting with the real estate agents. And so the first step though, is to ask yourself, like, how are you getting in front of real estate agents? Do you have an identified process to get in front of real estate agents? And something that we've been doing within um, our our division is we had to get real with ourselves. We said, what's the one activity? There's so much distraction right now, but like, what's the one activity that we know we need to do every day to help more buyers? It's kind of like, what's the one activity we need to do to get healthy? Is it go to the gym or is it eat better? And it it's probably eat better before it's go to the gym, but it's eat better and and go to the gym. Have some sort of heart health exercise. Um, I'm not saying try to get a six pack, but you know your heart needs some cardio in it. And so it's similar in our business. I'm not saying it it just it boils down to one thing, but we did say that prospecting for real estate agents to a degree our database that we have to commit to 60 minutes a day every day to do that. And so what that looked like within our group was we, because we've got branches, you know, from Florida to California to Colorado, different time zones, but we set up a Zoom accountability, literally, I just got off of it um, an hour ago, and we put ourselves on mute and we have theme days. This is going to transition to what we're talking about with real estate agents, but the first thing is, is you have to commit to doing the activity. So on Mondays, we made it a point to call real estate agents, and every, uh, so Mondays, we call real estate agents. Tuesdays, we do the status update calls for anybody who's under contract. Hey, how's it going? Here's an update with your file. You know, if they have a home to sell, how's that going? Just coffee talk with them. So the status updates on Tuesdays is for clients and for real estate agents. So if you have a real estate agent you have a deal with, that doesn't count as an agent that you're calling on Monday. Monday should be calling people that are already in your starting lineup and then the ones that are on the bench because you have to keep agents on the bench to... Because some of your starting lineup could get out of the business. They could have a family member that gets in the business. There's a lot of stuff that's happening with NAR and agents and the dual compensation that we can get into at a later time. But Wednesdays are calling our clients who are pre-qualified and pre-approved and just doing check-in calls. How's it going? Um, have you seen anything you liked? Do we need to make any adjustments to your home search? What we're trying to do is ask really good questions, which is what Deborah teaches in her class of exactly what to say but ask meaningful questions to get the context you need that you can then call the real estate agent and give them an update. Hey, I just spoke to Susie. They seemed a little frustrated, you know, whatever, good or bad, whatever. Hey, they really liked how you did this for them. And um, so it's still, even though it says house check-in calls, that doesn't mean that we're only doing that. If we get some, if we get a good nugget, we're calling the agent. Thursday are database calls. Probably the number one thing people ask me is like, oh, Denise, I don't know what you mean by database calls. Like we overthink and we overwhelm ourselves and then we just end up not doing anything. So the easiest place to start is who do you have that has a home anniversary this month? Who has a birthday this month? Um, a lot of us clients got escrow now statements. So you can call for that. My last resort is I go to HomeBot and I look at the seller leads and I try to see who in HomeBot has or are most active that could be a potential seller. I call them and I try to generate the referral back to the agent. So those are database calls. Those are on Thursdays. And then Fridays are, are set the weekday. So Fridays, we write five handwritten thank you notes. Um, they could be to agents. They could be to title partners. Uh, one Friday a month, we make it a point to write a thank you note to somebody in our corporate staff, processor, underwriter, CEO, closer, funder. They don't get thank yous a whole lot. So we do that for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we spend the rest of that hour setting up the week for next week. So what that means is if Monday's our realtor call, 
then we're going to go ahead and identify what realtors I'm going to call, what their phone number is, so that we can be most efficient in that hour. Because if you show up on Monday and you don't have that identified, then you're spending a lot of time researching it. And so usually the next question I get is, well, I don't know what to say when I call an agent. And, and so we're going to transition to that next um, because a lot of what I say is encompassing the value that we bring to their client and the value that we bring to their client right now is in what we unpacked in that PPC call last time. But before I transition to that, does anybody have any questions? And Deborah, I know you've probably been reading the comments, but mm -hmm. before I dive into that, is there anything that they want me to address? How do you get target agents to take your phone call? I'm leaving lots of voicemails and text and they're not getting returned. That's very interesting because we've been doing this for weeks and almost every agent answers their phone. And that was a misbelief that, so I'm not saying that that's not happening to you. If that's happening to you, um, I would question how good that agent is because realtors who are in, you know, that are doing business, they answer phone calls because people could be calling them and it could be business to them. And so a misbelief that we all had in our group is like, I don't want to call an agent. They, they get blown up all the time by loan officers. I don't want to be annoying. I'm going to just send them a text instead. And the, the truth is, is what we've seen and heard has been an overwhelming of like realtor shocked that the lender called and mm -hmm. that they were excited for the call. It's crazy. Like, but you know, sometimes we tell ourselves something because at the end of the day, we don't, I'm not suggesting to make a cold call, by the way, all your realtor list on Mondays, we wrote out an entire list. I think I still have it of how you can make warm realtor calls, like who, so warm calls could be agents that you closed the deal with last week. Um, anybody that you made an offer on, if you called the agent, anybody that has, uh, that had an open house over the weekend and you were calling to see how it's going. Like, I'm not suggesting these being cold calls, but the truth is a lot of us don't make the calls because in our mind, we've told ourselves, we don't like to be cold called or spam called. And you're viewing this as a cold call and a spam call. And so if it makes you feel yucky receiving, you're likely not going to do it because you don't want that person to feel yucky. And that's just a misbelief and a mindset shift that you literally have to have that. But if you're calling them with something of value, if somebody has a listing and it's been sitting for more than two weeks and you notice their open house and you're genuinely calling to see how it's going and perhaps your exclusive lender incentive, meaning our 2-1 buy-down strategy, might be a possible solution for them, could we chat about it? That agent would love to hear that. Maybe that agent has never heard of that strategy. Maybe they don't know how to present it to the seller. Maybe they've been thinking of doing a price reduction and like they would love that phone call, be ecstatic for that phone call. So sometimes it's a mindset shift of, I don't want any of us to feel icky or make the other person feel icky. I want us to call them with something of value that actually is like, holy smokes, you just made my day, you know? So I do something similar with, our clients and I do, it's a marketing activity and a sales activity for the day. And we theme the days as well. Um, so I thought it may be helpful to show what this looks like for those of you who are also trying to integrate your marketing or creating content while trying to prospect. I mean, it can feel like you're wearing 18 different hats. And sometimes when I speak to some of you, I hear you guys almost like beating yourself up because you're like, I know I said I was going to do this. I said I was going to do it and I haven't done it. And I haven't done it. And we don't realize how much of that self-talk is so draining for our energy. So we try to make it really easy. And I, I do relate it to the gym, although I shouldn't because Denise is much better at the gym than I am. But when I go to Lifetime Fitness and you walk on to the that, second- Is that like gym, like GYM or is there a gym you know, in your life? You know, I am whatever. Is... Chasing kids right now is my workout. Okay. But when you go, when you go to the second floor at lifetime, there's like all these machines and, and you have like people that look like professional weightlifters in there. And I'm over here like, okay, it's been a little bit, uh, which weight should I start at? You know, cause you don't want it to be where you go to pick it up and you're like, oh crap, I can't even, you know, curl it. 
But my point to that is when you have theme days, even at the gym, it makes it easier when you're looking at all these machines and it's like, where to start? Well, if I know what's back and buys, then I'm going to focus on back and buy machines. So I'm going to show what our battle plan looks like um, in case, and, and you guys are more than welcome to take screenshots of this if you want. Um, it does align with our 30,000 foot above view content calendar. So we have content pillars and, and every Monday it's a different type of marketing activity beyond social media. So when you see on here, um, prospect for next month's interview co-host, it's because we do it in interview series, but this changes every Monday based off where we're at in the sequence. Cause you, you really need to hit people up in every area, you know, mailers are still great. Like people love handwritten cards, uh, doing pop buys every once in a while is still a way to get yourself seen and heard beyond just doing the typical phone call or text message that if it's not getting returned, then I would question how valuable is the message that you're leaving for people not to return the call. Um, so it's, it's, having phone calls and conversations with more intention and purpose and always thinking of what's in it for them because <laughs> that's all they care about. So um, Mondays, first of all, Mondays are our uh, batch content creation days. I'm a big believer in batching your content, bring a couple different shirts in if you need to, because that's easier to then executing and distributing that content throughout the week uh, because you've already recorded it all on Monday. And so sometimes if you wait until the day of and you're like, oh, I was going to post a TCA Tuesday, but you had a file go crazy. And so it's it's easy for your marketing to get left behind, but that is a part of prospecting. And it's a way to attract the right people to you. So then sales can come in and convert. And I think that's what, Denise, you're kind of most known for at this point is because you've been so consistent and intentional with social you legit have people, agents that send you leads that don't even want to meet with you. They just have seen you over the years and it also coupled with your reputation in the market center as being able to provide exceptional service where you have people just now sending you business. So that's that's the ultimate goal. I just wanted to show how you can compartmentalize this because I did see that someone had asked what was Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, so for my clients, I do... We do have a standard that you meet with at least one qualified partner. So qualified meaning they've done at least three to four transactions in six months, which can be buy side, sell side, but we want to make sure that they're qualified partner meetings. And so their goal is to constantly fill at least one meeting a day. And sometimes it's people that we're, we've already met with and they're already business partners of ours, but this is one aspect that is kind of a, a non-negotiable to make sure that you're nurturing your current partners while also prospecting for new ones. Okay. So for Monday's list, um, Monday for us, you're getting your list together for the rest of the week. So Tuesdays is your status update calls where you're calling everyone who's, you know, under contract. Wednesdays are all pre-quals and pre-approvals. Guys, I can tell you this is a huge, this is probably the biggest expense in most business, loan officer business that I see. It's like you have people that were pre-approved a year ago that are not in any kind of nurturing campaign. And like, these are people that had shown interest Yeah, and we, we do nothing with them or they end up going and using somebody else or a builder because, and it's like, you work so hard to get the agent business or that lead, you get them pre-approved you know, on average, it's taking about 10 weeks to find a home. Why let this go stale? We also look for a list of listing agents from all closings of the week before. So anyone that we had wowed, we're, we're coming back around to them and trying to set meetings for the next week. So again, that's low hanging fruit because these, these listing agents have probably already seen your name a couple of times. You guys just closed a week ago. Hopefully you did a great job. And it's also some that we have submitted offers to, even if the offer wasn't accepted, it's like, if you wowed them, that's what I love about lender marketing platforms. You can really wow people with that tool. The goal is to set an intentional meeting to learn more about their business and what would be valuable to them. And then the last thing on Wednesdays, we're reviewing on uh, Redfin, any recent price reductions, which guys, I can tell you, there are still price reductions in every market. But we look at the last seven days, who's had a price reduction, and then we send the listing agent 
a proactive rate drop versus price drop, either video or lender marketing link, something, because that would be valuable to them. It's something that we, we saw, we noticed, and it's intentional. Thursdays are database calls. And I always look at, we end up going through the alphabet twice. So for this past week, this is an easier week because we're calling anyone with the last name that starts with Q. So for next week, it'll be anyone with the last name that starts with R and then S T U V. And, and so that way I can do a sort and I'll make sure that I'm calling all of those people just because of the rotation of the alphabet. But then we're also looking at who closed in the last week in previous years. So anyone who closed within this last week of April, we're looking at, and regardless if they have a 2% rate or not, we're still going to call, ask how things are going, what's changed, anything with income, employment, how's the parents, how the kids, you know, and then we're also doing quarterly calls to those who were in credit repair. Maybe they didn't initially qualify because of debt to income ratio issues. Maybe these are people in, you know, 2022 who are like, I've had it, I'm just going to rent. And so their lease could be coming up. So that's Thursdays are heavy database, like kind of problem clients or those who were delayed. And then Fridays, it are if you didn't meet your standard of having at least one qualified partner meeting per day, then you have to attend open houses on Saturday. And so you're looking to see who is hosting open houses for the week and you're getting that list ready. And, and then we're sending our mass email out to partners and clients. So that's kind of a look of, of what it looks like on my end for those who have done the same thing on, on theming the days with the intent of booking the appointment. Just great. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's setting aside 60 minutes of your day every day. It's, it should be a non-negotiable at this point. Uh, Barry Habib had a stat that said 60% of loan officers in the last 12 months only helped 12 or less families in the year. So we are simply not helping enough families. And if we know that, then the bigger question is, why are we not doing the one thing that we know we need to be doing? And if you can truly look in that mirror you're probably saying fear or you're feeling overwhelmed because you are overthinking what to say, what time of day, all this kind of stuff. It's like, it honestly doesn't matter. I do mine at 10 a.m. You could do yours at 2 p.m. The point is, is that you're committing to 60 minutes a day. So the night before every day, look at your day. Where can you squeeze an hour in? Put your phone aside, use your office phone and prospect. Because I can tell you that there is nothing that's going to make a bigger impact in your business than doing just that. Now, it's just like the gym analogy of would eating right and going to the gym accelerate your success? Absolutely. So making these phone calls with the intent to book appointments and then nailing the realtor consult would accelerate your success. So let's talk about that. If you get somebody on the phone and the first five to 10 minutes is going to be something warm. And I know some of you guys asked, do you look up someone's numbers beforehand? It really depends on your book of business. Like if you have agents that you've neglected, if you go back and you look at the last six months of your closings and you had a listing agent on that deal and you didn't introduce yourself to them, that's a warm transaction. You could call them and say, hey, Deborah." This is Denise. I was the lender that helped. It's been about three or four months. Um, I was I helped the buyer at 123 Main Street. And I it's my fault. It's been a few months, but I wanted to reach out to you and just genuinely ask, one, do you even remember doing the transaction with me? Did I do anything that stood out? And two, um, is there any feedback that you could give me as a lender that could be meaningful to help you and your business going into 2024 with all this stuff with the NAR? Um, I'm just genuinely looking to call and get feedback. Now, hopefully you're calling listing agents that you've recently done a deal with. Of, hey, we just funded on this loan. Thank you so much. Hey, by the way, I'm always trying to get better and, and be better than I was yesterday. So I'm actually calling for generally like brutal, honest feedback of what I could have done to knock your socks off. And guess what they say every single time? They're like, wow, this was, you know, like your communication was great. Now I have a great CRM and I have a great system. So I, I know that I'm going to get that. If you don't have that, they might tell you that. 
And that's great. That's a kink in the hose that we have to work on, you know? Um, but what's interesting is when I ask my, my loan officers, what is your value? What do you think in your heart that you bring to the table to your partners? Like they weren't prepared for this question. I just asked them, what is it that you think, what are the top three things that you're doing that would give your agents right now in 2024 the biggest impact in their business? And most of them answered how 60 to 70% of you guys would answer, which is I'm available, I'm thorough, I have great communication, I, I'm a strategist, so I look at things. But here's the thing about that. Real estate agents have been hearing those answers from your peers for years, and it's become hollow words, meaning all of what you're saying might be true, but because the last lender they met with said all the same things and then didn't deliver, they're not just going to believe you because you said it, because everybody says it. Everybody says they have good communication and that they're thorough and you know, if they write their name on the pre-qual letter, it's worth the piece of paper it's written on. And we have great service and great rates and great programs. Like that's all stuff they've all heard. So instead you could say, hey, um, something that I'm really passionate about is empowering my clients with our clients with information, education, and transparency so that they can make the best decision for themselves. Because what I found real estate agent is there are so many clients paralyzed and indecision. Have you, have you felt that? Like, and so it's conversational. And I'm like, there's so much fear and concern and chaos and interest rates and inflation. And they're sitting in a paralyzed state and they can't make a decision. And so something that we've done in our, with our company is we have put together presentations and consults to clients that move them from a state of confusion to a state of confidence. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to set up a 15, 20 minute Zoom with you. I want to show you exactly what we're showing your clients to not just get them confident to buy, but motivated to buy that almost every single one of our clients when they're done with our consult is calling you like, hey, I want to go look at homes tomorrow. Would you have some time this week or next week for us to visit on that? And then what I'm doing is I'm using this, I pull up my presentation for the my pre-purchase consult and I literally show them what I'm showing their clients. And after every presentation, they're like, oh, wow, yeah, no, my lender's not doing this. I know they're not doing it. I know that they're not delivering the words in a clear and concise way that accelerates decision-making and the human brain in front of them. How do I know that? Because I've practiced this over and over and over and over. Most of my competitors, y'all don't practice. You show up to the game and it's the first time you're, you you fumble, you stumble. It's obvious. You got to practice it. You have to role play it. You do. Watch the tape. Michael Jordan didn't make every shot he took. He didn't expect to make a, every shot. But what he did is he went back and watched the game tape. You're only going to get better if you listen to what you say and how you say it. And maybe even have peers listen to it, right? But the key is, is when an agent sees what you're presenting with the charts and data and numbers, by the end of it, they're like, can I have the, of course you can. But my primary and every like value bomb email that I send out weekly to agents that I know we've talked about, everything is centered around my primary focus right now is equipping your buyers with the education and information that they need to make a decision. And I do that through a consult process with charts, data, graphs. It's very factual, non-emotional. I'm not telling them that now is the buy. I'm showing them that now is the time to buy. And when it's their decision and not mine, I don't have commission breath. But when we're trying to arm wrestle them and tug of war them into buying, it feels icky. So have you, had any, have you had any buyer's agents lately like bringing up this whole NAR thing and like they, they don't even have clients right now and they may be thinking, I don't even want buyers. Where is it 
could this presentation not land well, or is it still landing well, at least in our area, because there's not, you haven't seen a big fear or concern from these buyer's agents getting commission. Like at, at any point, have you altered this of here's how we help you get more or help you articulate your value or anything like that? That's a natural side effect because they know that they're not great at presenting and they know that they need to now present to the buyer like they do the listing agent. And so we're telling them that, hey, you can use these same charts and stats and, you know, we've got really good, you know, MBS Highway has the report card specific to the county, but we have loan officers, you know, loan officers in our division that we we coach and mentor all over the U.S. And we're all utilizing this strategy and it's working really, really well because that's what agents are thirsting for. Agents have the same fear and concerns that we do. They're fearful of now having to get this buyer's agent rep signed. Well, what if at the end of your lending consult, you sent the doc you sign out for the buyer's rep? Hey, I know you're working with Sam. And if, if everything looks good and the numbers look good and you're ready to go out and start shopping for a home, then I can go ahead and send you this uh, buyer's rep agreement, something that the government now requires, but it essentially says that you're hiring Sam and us as your real estate team to go out and shop. So I'm going to send that to you. And if you have any questions in the meantime, I'm going to be following up. You see how like non, no big deal that was. Mm -hmm. You see how I'm saying like, you're going to hire us because I would love to have a buyer's agent rep to make them commit to us. You know what I mean? Now, not every agent's going to be cool with that, but there are some agents that are like, yeah, I'd love to see how that works. The I'm just showcasing that we're thinking creative. And guess what? There's a buyer's rep agreement that says, yep, you're going to use Sam. And the very next form says you can fire Sam at any time. It's pretty much non-committal. Why agents have so much fear over this, I don't know. But it's just because they haven't practiced it and rehearsed it and gotten feedback of the delivery of it and why not be a lending partner that helps them with that invite a real estate team in and say hey let's do role playing let's role play this you guys present it to me and i'll pick it apart so is there anything that so one y'all aren't seeing where you're making calls and people just aren't answering and you're leaving voicemails that doesn't seem to happen as often as no, our call list, like we, you know, every, every day after our uh, 60 minute power hour, let me just pull up our call reports that we got today. Um, I'll give you an example. So by the way, the feedback, so like one says 19 outbound calls, six conversations, two personal video texts, two appointments set, one new client referral. Um, that was on one. Let's see this one. So, so what yeah, are we they saying on those? calls to get meetings set or to get leads? Do you know? I'm sure they're all a little bit different, but. Yeah, I was going to say it depends on like the context of like, guys, these are just humans. You don't like if you were going to call a friend that you haven't spoken to in a couple of years, like what would you say? It's don't overthink it. But there's context around, well, what kind of partner are you calling? Well, let's identify that. Is it Someone that you did a transaction with in the last few years? Is it someone that you've identified that you want to do business with and they don't really know who you are? Like, is it an agent that had a recent price reduction that you saw with Deborah's Redfin, Redfin strategy that you want to call and introduce your 2 1 buy down program to? What's the context? At the end of the day, it's ring, ring, ring. Deborah, answer the phone. This is Deborah. Hey, Deborah, this is Denise, the mortgage nerd. Uh, I know you weren't expecting my call, but do you have a quick second? Uh, real quick. Yeah, I know you're busy. Hey, I saw on your one, two, three Main Street, you just had a ten thousand dollar price reduction. Is that right? Yes. What? Can you give me any 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 uh, info about that house? I've got a the reason I asked is I got a lot of pre-approved buyers, but I'm just curious. But is there any any reason why you think the house is selling or isn't selling? Yeah, because my sellers wouldn't listen to my epic advice where I told them where to list the price at to get it to sell. They wanted, they thought it was worth more. And so now, you know, we're having to reduce it and price it kind of back to where I thought it, it should have been priced originally. So, you know, if we could just have sellers listen, that'd be great. <laughs> Don't we love those kinds of sellers? So where, where do you think it should list or where do you think it would appraise at? And where did you start at? I, I think it'll appraise. Okay. So y'all see how 
agents love to talk. I very quickly migrated that call from being an annoying lender and I am getting her to vomit everything that's going on with this house and I'll keep pulling at it. We don't need to go through it on this call, but I can get Deborah to talk about it. I can get Deborah to talk about her sellers. Now they have no problem talking to me and you'll see that shift real quick, but I don't beat around the bush. I don't say, Hey, ring, ring, ring. Deborah answers. Hey, this is Denise Donahue. I'm a, I'm a local lender here at Benchmark. I'm I've been voted D magazine like 10 times like, and I'm <laughs> really the shit. So like, let me just, you can't do all that. They're going to hang up. It's, Hey, Deborah, this is Denise. I'm, I'm a local lender. Do you have a quick second? I know you weren't expecting my call. Real quick. Just acknowledge, acknowledge it. I already have a lender. <laughs> Stop yeah. calling. Hey, yeah. hey, no, no problem at all. I I actually have a lot of buyers, but I saw you had a house at one, two, three main street and I don't want to bug you, but I noticed the price was reduced. So what's the story on this home? Can you, can you give me any info? And I quickly am moving and she will talk. Even if it's a high D personality male, they will talk. They'll want to vent. Real estate agents are very social people that work very independently. They would love to talk. So you get some banter and you laugh and you make them laugh and you tell them, oh, you got a crazy seller. Oh my gosh, we just helped a client. I felt so bad for my real estate agent. She had a seller and literally he wanted to, now you're building rapport. Well, hey, the reason why I was calling is it's very helpful for me to know about every day I'm, I'm pre-approving buyers and we're always looking for strategic ways where if I know more about your property and I'm talking to a buyer and they're looking for a five bedroom home in Frisco, then I'd love to push them your way. But um, I do have a one page flyer that might be helpful for those pain in the ass sellers that you're talking about that really showcases a side by side of like, hey, we could drop the sales price and do this, or we could market your home with a five and a half percent rate. And so if you don't mind, I'll send it to you. I'll include a little video on it so you can just easily forward it to your seller. But it, we could market it like this is an exclusive buying opportunity for 123 Main Street to get this payment at this rate. Might create some more sizzle for you. So what's the best email address ever I should send that to? Debex. You see what I'm saying? Like, She's not going to say no. Assume that she's not going to say no. Have it prepared and send it over. No real, no lender is doing that. So you need to ask yourself, what are you afraid of? And if you're afraid of sounding like a sleazy sales, salesperson, that is your brain telling you, you don't have an identified value. Those golf clubs that we talked about, you need about four or five golf clubs in your bag, value clubs. You don't have those identified. You haven't practiced, articulated them. You're not confident in them because I can pull any value prop out and with confidence and conviction, tell you that my state of the art follow-up system is better than anyone out there. It will practically communicate with you and your client before they find a home, during and after. I've practiced saying that and I can say it with conviction because I know it's the truth. Hmm. You can't speak with conviction in a clear and concise way. You're going to show up like every other loan officer. And the only way to get good at it, y'all, is to practice. Practice every day. Make your calls. Set up a Zoom. Have the camera on you. Record it. So every call that you make, have it on speakerphone so you could hear what, how you sound. How did the agent respond? Is your intro too long and boring and about you? Like, y'all got to practice. And if you can't identify it because it's you speaking, then get your spouse, get Deborah. If you're a plug and play client, Deborah does this with her clients, like your branch manager. If your branch manager is not like go to a company that does this kind of stuff. They exist. We do it for all of our law officers. Like it's almost May of 2024. Rates suck right now. Fannie Mae just announced that they think rates are going to stay where they are. I just quoted somebody like a par rate of 7.625 with 20% down. <laughs> it is it? Ugly. Uh, it's in the over seven and a half percent right now. Wow. Again. Wow. And Fannie Mae announced that they think that rates are going to stay here. There's no economic indicators that states 
that the feds would lower the federal funds rate and investors are like, okay, we're pulling out of the bond market. So this is likely the world that we're going to be in. You have to start nailing this stuff. You, you, you don't have time anymore. You've got to get good at it and you've got to be able to showcase to your agents that you can articulate this to motivate buyers. Motivate is not the right word because that sounds a little manipulating. It's truly educating. So, so how do you make sure that people in your office aren't all calling the same agents where they get five calls? And yeah, we don't have any system to make sure that that doesn't happen. And guess what? It doesn't happen. Okay. So, okay. So then the fear. these are fear based questions. So, can we? One person had asked, What's your follow up strategy after you have the meeting? Why don't, why don't we dive into that a little bit? Because let's okay. say you, you do it via Zoom or if you do it face to face, then what? So, in our CRM system, we have a new realtor campaign. And every 30 days, it'll send me an email of this is a new agent you need to reconnect with intentionally, like uh, maybe a text message or a DM or a phone call. But every week, my agents get a, I call it a value bomb email from me that's showing them something along the lines of how we saved a deal from another lender or how we helped this agent convert this seller, or it's, it's not a newsletter, y'all. It's not fancy graphics. It is boring. Think like what emails looked like in 1990. It's not meant to look like spam. It's bullet point of this is how we helped this client or this partner. And it's every week. It has to be every week to stay top of mind, because if you have a really good appointment with a realtor and they're like, man, I really like that Tina lady. When they get a referral a week and a half later, they're going to be like, shit, what was her name? Hmm. Because they forget. So you have to have a system to drip on them weekly. Then hmm. twice a month, I have mass Zoom webinars. Um, I've got one this afternoon and I had one yesterday actually where it's my yesterday one was a 30 minute blitz. I do it every single month. It's at the end. It's the last week of every month of what you need to know about market updates. How's rates doing? What are contracts looking like? What are we seeing for third-party financing, um, option fees? What are we seeing with seller concessions? What programs are agents using that are really working right now with sellers and buyers? It's a 30-minute um, blitz. So that's a reason for me to call agents. It's a reason for them to show up. I record them. It's a reason for me to send it out afterwards. I can cast a wide net. I'm licensed in multiple states. So any agent can hop on and see it and start doing business with me. Any loan officers that work with us at our company can jump in and see it. Um, and then I have a new realtor onboarding where if you've been interested to working with the nerds, but you haven't yet and you want to know more about what we do, how our team structure is, and how we help you acquire and retain more clients, we host that every single month. Mm, and so for all like the looking that. at that, yeah, that's, that's today. new. Yeah. Oh, we start doing it this year because we have people, you know, some think, well, I, I'm not, I hate this, but they're like, I don't, I don't do a lot of business. So, you know, Denise isn't going to want to work with me or mm. I want to work with her, but I just don't know how, or so it's a quick call and we're going over our team, some of our loan programs. And then guess what? I'm going over my state of the art sit follow-up program because the number one pain point that real estate agents still have today is communication. So I have a presentation that articulates how we thoughtfully and intentionally keep them communicated with and their client before, during, and after. I don't even go over the PPC at that point. It's not that, that's not the club I'm using at that time. It's a different club and, mm -hmm. um, it's a game changer. It's giving them a window into who we are. And guess what? We pick up agents every time. So we have uh, quite a few people asking if this is going to be recorded. So yes, these are always recorded. We then put the recording in our Nerd and Bird Facebook group, as well as on the Nerd and Bird YouTube channel. Uh, we also have someone asking if they could join one of your sessions. My realtor sessions or the loan mm -hmm. officer? Oh, 
the onboarding. Yeah, I can. Um, my onboarding one is today in an hour and 15 minutes. So if, uh, if you guys, if I can get the zoom link out quick enough. Okay. So it starts in at the top of the hour. Yeah. So I'm going to put the email address, just email hello at okay. mggnerdgroup.com and I can invite you to it. Okay. Some of the loan oh, officers. They said both. Stuff, they, they actually uh, wanted to say. Course. Some of the loan officer stuff, we, you know, we, me and Marty, we run a division here at Benchmark Mortgage. And so we pour into the loan officers and the branch managers here to watch them with their swing. I can't, I wouldn't be able to physically, even though my heart would want to do this for every loan officer in America. So a lot of the loan officer stuff, selfishly, I want to be able to pour in to them. And so my capacity level is focused on them. Now, if you join Benchmark in our group, sure, um, branch managers, loan officers, we're always looking to, to bring them on. But my heart would say yes to everybody that would want the help because truly what fulfills my heart is seeing people reach their potential. You know, I was that girl in the crowd at Todd Duncan's first sales mastery. And I remember seeing Heather Bomar up on stage. She's a badass that used to work at Cornerstone and moved, but she was this wife and mom and, and was killing it. And, you know, in my world, I'd only seen men in suits killing it. And so mm everything is unbelievable until you see it done and then it becomes believable. And so then the question is, is why not you? If mm -hmm. I can do it, anybody else can do it. And so I want to see everybody reach their potential. I just, I wouldn't have the capacity to do it for every and all. So, mm -hmm. but just come join benchmark and then we can, <laughs> that's the easy answer. It's not a recruiting thing. This nerd and bird, I can't stand like companies and these types of zoom calls where it's like a constant sales pitch that like is vomit to me, but I'm just keeping it real. Cause y'all know that's how we roll. So I'm, I'm curious if you've had any agents even bring it, like are, are agents freaking out about this whole NAR thing or am I just seeing it online? Cause I follow a bunch of loan officers and realtors that are all, which guys, let me, can, I also just want to say it, it's never helpful. Like when you're drowning and someone's trying to sell you something like that's not helpful. So I yeah. love that you said before you guys are even calling or touching your agents, you're looking for context and guys, social media is a great place to go to social stock or to warm up a cold call oh, to see sure. what's important to them. So that's part of the strategy. But if you do have someone who's possibly drowning and you every angle, you have like every real estate coach trying to host a webinar or sell them something or this script book, it's, that's not always helpful. I would almost say it's a requirement because here's the thing. Um, <laughs> Sam says he called me. It's not fair, Sam. You said you had just started your brokerage. So, um, but here, here's what I'll say to that. Um, you know, we get calls from recruiters all the time. I know we all do. And it does come across extremely tone deaf. When mm -hmm. I had a voicemail left on my phone Tuesday, that said, hey, Denise, this is so, so from this mortgage company. I've been following you on social and you're absolutely killing it. You're a rock star, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, if that was true, then you would have seen that our dad just passed away on Monday and you wouldn't be calling me, recruiting me. You would be calling me to offer me condolence. You know what I mean? Like it came across so tone deaf that there's a layer of like, you should almost always check people's social before you make the call. Mm. Very true. What if they had a, uh, I know, like, but I've had agents have really big life events and like one of our agent partners, I, like I'll just, I felt horrible. They, him and his wife um, got pregnant and then lost their baby. And I called to give an update on their loan Apparently they hadn't been on social for a week and a half because, you know, they were just so distraught of everything. Not only did I not notice that he wasn't on social, I mean, it's easy to do, right? But I didn't look at it beforehand. And he had just made a post two hours before that they lost their baby. And I was calling mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just at that point, I was like, you know what, probably should 
so that you don't come across. Now, like, do I expect everybody to look at my social and know? No, I had a Florida group or these loan officers, they were, they got a VA deal and was trying to save it from another lender. And they called me on Monday and they had no idea. I hadn't made any kind of post, but they had no idea that, you know, we had just found out what we found out. And the next day they sent me a text like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you answered my phone and you had that going on. I don't, I don't like expect people to check people's social media, but it is kind of a good reminder that maybe you should. Makes what? Why are you smiling? Because I was talking to our older sister and, you know, like my social spirit, you guys, and for, for the record, the brain doesn't even understand the difference between like a mental rep and an actual rep. And there's a lot of you that I have met at conferences where I was like, have we actually like never met before face to face? Like it feels like we have, cause yeah. you know, we see each other all the time. And so I, I am laughing on the inside because when we did find out that dad had passed our older sister's typical Gen Xer, and this is nothing against Gen Xers or stereotyping Gen Xers, but she's not big on social. And to me, I was like, this is my support group. Like, these are my clients. These are my friends. And she was like, Deborah, these aren't your friends. And I was like, yeah, they are. It says friends <laughs> on, it even says it on Facebook, but like I, social has always been my way to express myself. And in fact, I even put in my bios, like follow at your own risk. And I know that's not the way that everybody works, but I do look at you guys as, you know, you're, you're not just strangers to me. Like it's not the same as going to a mall and seeing a bunch of people because we've connected in some way we're sharing intimate things about our lives. And it, it can be such a powerful tool when leveraged correctly. So, um, that's why I was laughing. And she was like, those aren't your friends. I'm like, yeah, they are. Like, this is my support group. <laughs> oh, um, anyways. But it's, you know, it's some, some people use it for that. Some you're definitely way more like, I didn't make a post about it. I made a story because I know it goes away in 24 hours. Everybody's different and it's fine, you know? So mm -hmm. two things can be true at the same time. You can, anyways, this just drives me crazy how polarizing this country can be sometimes is like we can disagree on something and still be friends so okay since we only have about 10 more minutes left I want to is there anything that you haven't shared with us in regards to when you actually get the meeting with the agent like how long do those typically last are they usually on zoom and is there anything in particular after you've kind of you know social stalked them you know a little bit about them what questions are you asking to learn what's most valuable to them? I mean, I know you said, forgot how you worded it with the client aspect, but is there anything else you guys are doing that you haven't shared that is working right now? Um, the, the club, our go-to club right now has been, what we're seeing is that, I mean, there's a fact that 72% of buyers put home buying on pause last year. Mm. And so- what that means for you and us, Mr. Realtor, is that there's a lot of people sitting in this pond of maybe, maybe I should buy, maybe I should sell. And what I have found is that a lot of real estate agents spend time trying to find people who have already made the decision that they want to, and they're not incubating this pond or even fishing in this pond anymore to simply convert these maybes into yeses. And I have found that if this pond of maybes could see the stats, data, and charts that we've been equipping our buyers with, it certainly has been moving more out of this pond and into this pond. And quite frankly, if it moves them to a no, that's just as helpful because a no means we don't have to spend any more time with them. But sitting and maybe is not great either. So what I would like to do is I would like to show you how we're educating and empowering your clients. And I'd even like to make an offer that maybe we offer to your pond of maybes a free webinar to come in and say, let's do a market update. If you've been, if you've had thoughts of buying, but you've put it on pause, we'd like to share some current statistics, numbers, charts, data of where the market's headed to equip you with more information to make a decision on if you should consider getting back into the market or not. And they're like, oh my God, I would love that. And guess what? They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do a Zoom. They don't have a Zoom account. They go get a Zoom and they're like, well, free accounts only 45 minutes. Hey, no problem. My account, 
I've already paid for it and goes up to 500, you know, registrants and like all of those things. And you've just now become really valuable to them. But if I'm making prospecting calls and my goal is to get an appointment and my appointment is, hey, what I'm hearing is there's a lot of people sitting on the sidelines waiting. Are you seeing that in your business, Deborah? Yes. Okay. How many clients do you think you met with last year that would buy if rates came down or if they could get a certain amount for their home? Out of the 20 you just mentioned, how many think would buy if they re were equipped with the right information? Two, three. Okay. Like, I'm getting some context out of it, but I'm not really looking for context as much as I just want them to see the presentation. And then I ask them at the end of the presentation, before I end this call, like, truly, what what feedback do you have for me? Like, do you think if your buyer saw this during their consult to get pre-qualified or pre-approved that they would be more motivated to buy? I'm asking them in intentionally. Yeah, no, I think they would. Okay. But do you have any buyers now that might need to see this right now? Yes. Okay, great. What are their names? I'll contact them. Every time you'll get a lead. Every time. You just got to make the call and stumble and do it and look like a hot mess. But guess what? You doing it as a hot mess is still better than not doing it. Hmm. It's good. And the next time you do it, you'll be a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. But you got to have a weekly value bomb email to do your follow up. Every 30 days, you got to call and check in. Like, don't don't go to the gym every day and then eat Oreos at night. I feel tacked. <laughs> So someone asked, do you make the subject line the same for your value bomb so that they know what it is and what to look for? No. Okay. Nope. Uh, my last subject line was just out of curiosity, very exactly what to say scripting. Mm -hmm. um, what are my other ones? I'll, I'll read you. I've got okay. it pulled up. Yeah, that I know good. we got we to wrap up, but. So guys, while she's pulling that up, I want you to decide, make the decision, what's going to be your 60 minute time slot, if that's what you're committing to, to at least have it time blocked on your calendar as a non-negotiable each day to call agents. And then create your own theme days. You can use our theme days if you want, but set a standard of the amount of time per day and then segment your list so that you're touching kind of every possible income stream for your business, you've got to start at least there. Because the more that you have that figured out, then it's easier. Then you're staring at your list and you're like, all right, I've got 59 minutes to go. I got to at least make, I got to try, got to make a call. And slide dial doesn't work. You got to actually call. Yeah. Um, this is cool. Whoever put this together, Kiki, key takeaways. It's probably wow. an AI note taker. I would guess, but maybe not. I need, I need that in my life. Okay. Um, see, I learned from y'all. So some recent subject lines, how we saved the self-employed deal. Reminder, so social media news you can use. I took a graphic that Deborah's team does for our marketing. And it's, instead of just using it for social, I used it for my weekly value bomb email. Uh, I don't normally share stuff like this, but just out of curiosity, two more days, NAR ruling plus seller concessions. Be honest. This client bought $50,000 more home for the same payment. Cheat sheet plus zoo market update. Know someone who might want this home. See you tomorrow, Valentine's party. Soft credit pool prequal update. Social media news you can use. Keeping it real. The biggest thing, guys, is who are the people you're trying to serve and what are the problems that they're facing? How do you help them overcome those problems? So you have to think like an agent. What are they scared of? What are their needs? Social media, they, gosh, they know they need to send value bombs to their clients. They need to be hosting events for their clients. So how do you go beyond the transaction of status quo, which is just closing on time, great rates, great fees, blah, 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 and solve their business challenges today? That's how I would approach your value bomb emails. Not sure if you saw this and share it with them. Would it be helpful if 
you know, so, but you've got to be a student of the people you serve. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to post this in the, I think I can post it. No. And Candace said, I like the new mortgage nerd sign. She's actually had that. You've had that one. No, for a while. this one's new. Oh, that this is the one. new one. Yeah. Oh, thank you for noticing. Yes. Thanks, I Candace. I, that looks, oh, it's the same as the one you have in the front. Yeah. I just got a smaller version for in here. <laughs> oh, it looks good. You don't have all Thanks. the cords. Thank God. You didn't notice she did. So I literally I'm surprised just, I didn't. Okay. I'm going to upload this. This is the cheat sheet. I think I can do it. I got tired of everybody copying my, um, nerd sign yeah so you know say, do we need an intervention for you how many Why? of those are you gonna buy <laughs> <laughs> just no gotta more. keep updating it and is that I denise totally is the the queen of crafts like if you don't follow her on social and see her stories as if she couldn't afford like this planter thing but she had the nerve to buy a filing cabinet like those oh i'm so fired up about that Wow. I'm, I was, no, it's a really, it's a really great hack. Like, um, okay. I just sent the screenshot of the, but yeah, you know, those big metal planters, they're like a thousand dollars. So I went to Facebook marketplace, got a filing cabinet. So you didn't even buy a new one. Out. You legit even just went to the marketplace. Yeah. Why would you buy a new one? Took the drawers out, put it on its back and then put sod. And then it, it's a planter for 25 bucks. Okay. But how is it today? Cause it's been a couple of months. Oh, I'll make a post. I'll post it when I get um, home. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. She also <laughs> spray painted her own ornaments. Okay. Is this a roast? <laughs> this yes. a roast? Because this, okay. she loves to do projects and like update things and reinvent things. And I'm like, how much time did it take you to lay out all the balls to then spray I'm paint? I'm a creative designer. I like to see something that's like this and turn it into this. It's my creative brain. You don't do yuck on my yum. Don't <laughs> yuck Carter on my yum. Oh. Carter was eating, he was eating pickles and I was like, that's <laughs> disgusting. And he was like, mom, don't yuck my yum. Like, okay. Pam said the bigger question is did someone video her doing it for real don't worry Pam because you can't go anywhere with Deborah without being um filmed it's like a paparazzi following you everywhere but no I did this in the privacy of my own home without somebody recording me I looked like a hot mess I was probably still in pajamas and you know but I did anywhere I got time. Deborah there's like she's recording every I could be picking my nose and she records it and then post it and I'm like cool yeah, cool. There was one time we were at the airport and as I was sitting there on the toilet, because we were both in the toilet stalls, I was like, I'm going to put my phone, I'm going to turn it on the video camera and just like slide it under the divider. She did. She did. <laughs> it was so funny. So I'm trying to piss in a that was, stall. That was a good one. Privacy. Should I and post it? all of it? a sudden I see, I see this <laughs> camera and I'm like, what? It was underneath. Yeah, you were you were just about to go for the wipe. I was like, oh, this is the gold shot. So wrong. You are you are. <laughs> it's funny. There's something wrong with you. Yeah, probably. Anyways, all right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We've got this recorded. We'll post it on our Facebook group. Um, commit, y'all. Commit to 60 minutes a day. It'll change your life. 60 minutes a day for 30 days. It's going to give you so much confidence and I, I've seen it. I've seen it with loan officers in our, in our, in our division. So do it, commit, write your wins down that you had, evaluate your losses, just commit y'all. That's half of it. So see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.